PDF documents have become popular in recent times. They have a consistent layout and are supported on all major operating systems. That makes them ideal for web applications and are used in instances such as order invoices and receipts. But how do you go about creating one? Well, in this video, I'll show you how to create a free PDF document in ASP.NET Core using HTML and CSS. Now, for more ASP.NET Core coding tutorials, visit roundthecode.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash roundthecode, and follow us on Twitter, it's at Round the Code. Join the Round the Code Discord server. Ask your ASP.NET Core question and get our community to help solve your issue. Go to roundthecode.com forward slash discord. I'm going to go ahead now and create an ASP.NET Core web application to demonstrate how you can actually create a PDF document. So I've got Visual Studio 2019 open in front of me. Let's go ahead and create a new project. Let's select ASP.NET Core Web Application and let's give it a name. Let's call it roundthecode.pdf and click on the Create button. Let's now select ASP.NET Core Web App Model View Controller and that's going to create our project for us. Okay, so our web project is now set up. We just need to make some configuration changes. So I'm going to right click on the project and I'm going to go down to Properties. I'm now I'm going to select Debug. And I'm going to change the launch and I'm going to select project. Like so. I'm going to untick the launch browser and we're going to select the app URL to localhost 3000. We'll give that a save and run it and make sure our application is running. So we're going to run it and test it out in a browser. Okay, so our application is running now. Let's just make sure that the application's working in the web browser and you can see it is. So we've got our default Visual Studio project here. We can click around with it and then yeah, it looks like it's all working for us. So the first example I want to show you is how to create a PDF document and actually capture websites. Now for this example, we're going to have a look at roundthecode.com and we're going to capture the home page in desktop mobile and tablet. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a new controller and add a new controller. And we're going to we're going to create an empty one. And we're going to call it PDF controller. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some routes for it. So we want everything in this controller to go under the forward slash PDF route. So we're going to use the root attribute at controller level and declare it like that. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a website action and this is going to render to PDF forward slash website. We're going to make it asynchronous because we're going to be using asynchronous methods within it. We're going to return a task and we're also going to make it async like so. So now we're just going to return null and we're going to set a route up there with website. So now everything in this action will render from forward slash PDF forward slash website. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to install a new get package. Now this is the new get package that's actually going to create the PDF document for us. So it's called select PDF and in order to do that I go to tools, new get package manager and package manager console. In there I need to run the install package command and the new get package I'm after is select.html to pdf.net core. That's going ahead and installing our new get package for us. Okay, so that's done for us. So let's go back into the PDF controller and let's write out the methods. So as I said earlier, we need to create a mobile, a tablet and a desktop view. We need to capture it from roundthecode.com. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a couple of instances of the HTML to PDF class. So we're going to set one for mobile view. So we're going to create a new instance of HTML to PDF. 
And what you can do with this is you can go into the options. First of all, I need to bring in the actual reference to it. So yeah, we can create the op we can use the options of the HTML to PDF instance, and we can use the web page width. So this will determine what size website will be brought back to us. So for mobile view, we're going to set it to 480. We're going to create a separate one for tablet view now. Copy that in, and we're going to set that to 1024 pixels. And finally, we're going to select, we're going to create a desktop view. We're going to make that full HD, so it's going to be 1920. Right, now that we've got that set up, what we need to do now is actually create the PDF document. So how we do that is we pull the mobile view instance that we've got. And because we're going to convert the URL into a PDF document, so we're going to capture the layout, we can call the convert URL method. And we're going to get the website in there. So roundthecode.com. Now we're also going to append the tablet and the desktop view. So in order to do that, we can call the PDF again, and we're going to call the append method. And then this time we're going to copy that into there, but we're going to use the tablet view. And finally, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it for the desktop view. So that's that. Now we've got two options here. The first option is that we're going to render the actual PDF to the HTTP response. The one after that is we're actually going to save the PDF document onto the file storage. So in order to render it to the HTTP response, we need to get the bytes array. So all we need to do with that is call the PDF instance and run the save method. From there, we can return a file. We pass in the PDF bytes and declare the mind type. So the mind type is application forward slash PDF. We need to pass in the PDF bytes in there, not the PDF instance. So that's all good. So let's run that and see if our PDF document actually loads. So we're going to run the application now and then we're going to render that URL. OK, so we've run the website URL. So it's localhost 3000 forward slash PDF forward slash website. You can see here it's captured around the code.com. So we've got our mobile view here. Keep going down. And this will now show us our tablet view. So again, keep going down. And then finally, this is our full HD view, our desktop view. And as you can see there, it's displaying it in the PDF document. The next thing I want to have a look at, so is we're rendering it to the HTTP response, but now we want to actually save that PDF document into the file storage as a physical file. So how do we go about doing that? Well, it's relatively simple. All we need to do is we need to create a new instance of Stream Writer. Need to get the reference for it. So using system.io. We need to pass in a parameter where we're actually going to save the file. So we're going to save it in C, in it pub, dub dub root, round the code, the PDF. Move that over for you. And round the code. PDF. And this is where we're going to call our await because it's an asynchronous method that we're running. We're going to run the stream writer, base stream, and we're going to call the write async method and we're going to pass in our bytes into it. So we pass in PDF bytes. We also just need to Put in the offset and the length of the actual byte array. So we call PDF bytes dot length. And there we go. If we run our application again, all being well, it should save it as a physical file as well as returning the HTTP response. OK, so it's refreshed our page again. So it's returning the PDF document in the HTTP response. 
let's just go ahead and look and see if it's saved our file. So yeah, as you can see here, in our file location, we've got our roundthecode.pdf. Let's just open it and make sure it's working. So yeah, once again, you can see that's the mobile view there. Got the uh, tablet view there. Go right to the bottom. We've got our desktop view there. So that's how you go about actually rendering websites in a PDF document. So the next thing I want to do is actually create an invoice as a PDF document. And I'm going to use HTML and CSS to do this. Now already, I've already got some CSS files in here. You've got invoice and site. And we've also got an, inv uh, uh, an invoice view as well. So this has got all the HTML for our actual invoice as well. We've got a logo up here. It says invoice. We've got a billing address on there. Invoice number. Date. And then price on there. The total. And some footer details like payment details and things like that. Don't worry, they're not real details. So if you want to download the code or any of my code examples, you can go to roundthecode.com forward slash code hyphen examples. So now we're going to go ahead and actually render this into a PDF document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, set a new action. But before I do that, I need to bring in the constructor. And what I need to do with this is I need to bring in an instance of I composite view engine. So we're going to bring that in. Need to create a global instance within the controller for it. And then we're going to set the instance here. Right, next now we can go ahead and create the invoice. So we're going to set the root of invoice and create a new asynchronous action within the PDF controller. So once again, we're going to bring back a tie task I action result. And we're going to call it invoice async. Now for this, we need to create a new stream writer. So what we're going to actually do with this is we're going to actually go ahead and create this view here, this PDF underscore invoice into the string writer so we can actually bring it back as HTML within this controller. So we're going to create a new instance of that, new string writer. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to bring up our instance here, the Composite View Engine, and we can run the Find View. We bring in the controller context. We bring in the view name, which is underscore invoice, so it matches the file name there. And is main page? No, it's a partial page, so we're going to set that to false. Now we need to just check that it actually exists as well. So if the view result, it's got a property of view. If it's null, we go ahead and throw an exception. So we'll throw an argument null exception. View cannot be found. Now, of course, at this point underneath this, it will assume that it has found it. So we can go ahead and do what we need to do. So first things first, we need to create a new instance of the view dictionary. And what we do with that is we create a new instance of view data dictionary. We just have to bring in a couple of MVC instances. So we need to bring in empty model metadata provider and a new model state dictionary. Need to just bring in those references as well. No potential fixes. That brings that all in. We need to bring in the view data dictionary as well. Yep, no errors. That's good. Next, we need to bring create a new instance of the view context. We're going to create a new instance of it. 
we bring that in now so we don't get the squiggly lines. View context. So for this, we need to pass in a couple of parameters. We need to pass in the controller context. We need to pass in the view result dot view. We need to pass in the view dictionary that we just created. In addition, we need to pass in the temp data, string writer, and a new instance of HTML helper options. So that's basically going to be the context for our underscore invoice file in here. Next thing we need to do is we basically need to render that. So what we do is we call the await it's asynchronous, call the view result instance. There's a property, there's a class of view, and we need to call the render async view context. So this is the point where it actually creates the EDF, the HTML, and well, the HTML in the underscore invoice into the actual string writer, which is up here. Now that we've got that, we can go ahead and create our instance of HTML PDF. So very similar to what we did when we were creating the websites into a PDF document. So we create a new instance of HTML to PDF, and we're going to pass in a web page width and web page height this time. We're going to go for 1,000 on the width and 1414 on the height. Now there's a number of options on here for the html.pdf instance as well. For this one, we've got some background colors and I want to make sure that they're brought in into the PDF document. So I'm going to call the draw background property and set it to true. Now that that's done, we now create our actual PDF document. So once again, we call the HTML to PDF instance, and this time we're going to call the convert HTML string. So last time with the website, we called the convert URL, but this time we're going to call the convert HTML string. And remember the HTML for the underscore invoice file is in the string writer. So we just bring that in and set it to string. Now we do exactly the same. So we get our byte array the save method and then we're going to return the file so we're going to do exactly the same as we did in the website method call that up there okay let's run it in our browser we're going to run localhost colon 3000 forward slash pdf forward slash invoice and we should see our actual pdf document with our invoice created so let's go ahead and do that we're just going to be running the application now and as you can see, the actual invoice has been created into a PDF document. It's rendered at the address that we specified. And you can see here, it's got our invoice in here. So it's all the HTML in here. It's got our billing details, invoice details, the products that are being ordered, recipient and payment details. So lastly, what I want to do is like what I did with the website is actually create this into a physical file. So if we stop the application, we can go down here, copy this again, put it underneath the PDF bytes variable. And we're going to create a new PDF document. We're going to call it invoice. Rerun the application. We'll refresh the page. It should render the PDF document and should also save that PDF document to our file storage. So now it's gone ahead and returned our PDF document as part of the HTTP response. But has it actually gone ahead and actually created the document for us in our file storage? As you can see there, it has. So let's open it, and just make sure that it's working. And as you can see, there's our PDF document. It's on our file storage. So this now allows us to create dynamic PDF documents in ASP.NET Core. And as I said earlier, they can be used in many instances, such as a website order, or creating terms for an insurance premium that has been purchased. I'm sure you agree there are many benefits for using a PDF document on an e-commerce website. Now, thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.